Of all the players in the NBA, few are as well known as Paul George. After all, with six all-star appearances, five-time All-NBA selections, and NBA All-Defensive Team honors to his name, he is a true icon. Yet despite the fact that he has won countless awards and is poised to be one of the star players of the championship contending Los Angeles Clippers, there are still a lot of people that don't know about PG-13. So today we're going to be counting down the top 10 things you didn't know about Paul George. But before we do, don't forget to like, subscribe, and smash that notifications button so that you never miss out on any of our latest videos. Number 10, comfort food. Although many assume that pro athletes must always maintain an extremely clean diet, they are human too, and thus will sometimes cave in and occasionally feast on a comfort food. And despite being a premier NBA player, Paul George is no exception to this trend and is known for feasting on two very popular junk foods, chicken wings and macaroni and cheese. As a result, we think you'd agree with us in saying that his cheat day is very similar to many of ours. Number 9, a fan Family of athletes. Like many NBA athletes, Paul George grew up around incredible athletic role models. In particular, his two greatest have been his older sisters, Tiasha and Portala. Now, Portala was a volleyball college athlete at CSU San Bernardino, and Taisha played basketball competitively at Pepperdine University, with Taisha being the most notable during her winning the 2003 Daily News Player of the Year. As a result, the two would mentor Paul when he was younger, with Taisha often competing against him and helping Paul hone his skills. And although Paul would eventually beat her in one on ones, by his senior year of high school, it goes without saying that they played a major role in bringing him to where he is today. As kids, Tiosha and I, you could say had a friendly rivalry. She was bigger, taller, and a better shooter than I was. But I was determined, determined to be better than her. When I would go to Tiosha's games with my mom and dad, I could barely sit down. In one gym, I was watching her every move. Number 8, The Falling Out Like many NBA players, Paul George decided to leave college early, foregoing his final two seasons in order to clear himself for the 2010 NBA Draft. Now, before the draft, George was predicted to be 12th by the Memphis Grizzlies by several leading mock draft boards, with analyst Mark J. Spears even going so far as to say that, quote, in five years, Paul George would be the best player to come out of this draft, end quote. As a result, his obvious potential, he would go on to go slightly above expectations and end up being picked 10th overall with the Indiana Pacers, playing with the team for seven seasons until eventually being dealt to the Oklahoma City Thunder. After requesting a trade, supposedly due to non-basketball related reasons, Paul George nonetheless remains one of the greatest players in Indiana Pacers history. With the 10th pick in the 2010 NBA Draft, the Indiana Pacers select Paul George of Fresno State University. Number 7, His Family As far as relationships go, Paul George is certainly a committed man. That's because he started dating his girlfriend, Daniela, in the summer of 2013 and now been together for more than six years. Now, Daniela is ah, quite notable in her own right for being an Instagram model that co-owns a swimsuit line called Nude Swim, having a Serbian family on background, but having been born in Queens, New York, she paid her tuition at the University of Miami by working as a dancer at strip clubs and continuing to work at various strip clubs before meeting Paul George at one of them. Yet, trouble hit just out of a year of dating when Daniela filed a lawsuit against George due to him supposedly offering her a million dollars to get an abortion, which was something that Daniela refused to do. Regardless, this lawsuit was eventually dropped and the paternity test, Paul assumed his role as father. And thus, it was pretty obvious that Paul George may have not have been looking for a long-term relationship with Daniela at first. However, considering that their couple had their second daughter, Natasha, in 2017, it's pretty clear that he is now committed to staying with her long-term. It does. <laughs> Puka. Say hi. You got your daddy's dance moves for sure. Number 6, Recruitment Issues Despite Paul George being a standout high school athlete who averaged an incredible 23.2 points and 11.2 rebounds in his senior year, most schools did not consider him to be a top prospect. This is evident due to the fact that he ranked just 20th among his fellow California prospects in his draft class and was considered to be just a 3-star recruit by Rivals.com. As a result, top-tier schools weren't exactly clamoring to have him on their team, and at first he had accepted offers from smaller schools such as Santa Clara and Pepperdine. However, despite eventually getting offers from large schools such as Georgetown and Penn State, he would eventually choose to play with Fresno State due to the school offering him a significant amount of playing time. I think maybe his greatest legacy is that he opened the door again for great high school young men from all around the world to come here and be a part of this program. So he's got a lot of talents, but I think most importantly, I think it's the character of this young man that is most impressive. You know, without Fresno being a part of my story, 
uh, nothing else will be a part of my story. Number 5, a YouTube sensation. Not only has Paul George made a name for himself in the NBA community, but also stands apart for being a pretty big name in the vlogging community. This is because George has about 63,000 subscribers on YouTube with his inaugural video managing to get an incredible 1.2 million views. Within these videos, George shares his private parts of his professional life and his personal life, with these including events such as Christmas Day with his partner and kids, and a vlog of NBA All-Star Week. Nonetheless, due to Paul George bringing in millions per year, he mainly makes his videos not in order to make money, but in order to indulge in his video making hobby while also fostering a close connection with his fans. Number 4, Paul George's endorsements. According to Forbes, Paul George's current earnings for 2020 are $32.8 million. Of this number, about $24.8 million comes from his salary, with this figure making him the highest paid player on the Clippers and 10th highest paid player in the NBA. Unsurprisingly, the remaining $8 million comes from his endorsements and sponsorships, with most notable being his shoe contract with Nike. That's because in 2017, they worked together to create his own signature lines of shoes, known as the PG1s, with these shoes having a very positive reception to this day, when you find the further that he is also sponsored by the lines of 2K Sports, AT&T, Foot Locker, and Gatorade, it shouldn't come as a surprise that he is rolling in the dough. Ball game. Number 3, The Gruesome Leg Injury While Paul George has had his fair share of injuries, his most gruesome by far came during an entrust squad scrimmage on UNLV's campus. You see, George was in the middle of doing a layup against James Harden in the fourth quarter when his right leg got caught on the basket's pole, causing his knee to essentially collapse. The paramedics almost immediately rushed over, and after just 15 minutes, a helicopter arrived to take him to the hospital. Once hospitalized, a doctor diagnosed him with a tibula fibula fracture, making him unable to play for the rest of the 2014-2015 season. Yet, due to his commitment to a proper recovery, he was able to return to the court in 2016 and quickly readjusted to netting superstar caliber stats. Paul George yeah. suffering a serious lower leg injury, and we're going to take a break and come back right after this. Number 2, Paul George's Recovery Any athlete out there knows that injury recovery can sometimes be very painful, and Paul George is no exception. This is evident due to the fact that he commented that rehabilitation for his injury was, quote, the hardest he had ever worked out in his life, end quote. In particular, he said that the most challenging aspect of the rehabilitation experience was in the fact that he had to do strength in one leg without weakening his other leg, meaning that he inevitably had to do numerous intense full body workouts every day. Yet in addition to this change in exercise, he also had to make extreme changes to his diet and was forced to eat clean and eat more veggies despite him claiming that he is not a very big vegetable guy. Luckily these changes ended up being for the better as it wasn't long until he noticed that he had changed his diet, he had the motivation that he liked in the beginning to both reciprocate and generally feel much better. And when you consider that his daily diet now consists of spinach, ham, cheese, omelette for breakfast, some carbs in a fruit smoothie and a post-workout Gatorade protein shake, pasta and fish for lunch, cashews as a snack, and chicken breast with green beans for dinner, it is clear that his diet as as lead as his on-court play. I had to put that extra work in, um, extra conditioning. While those guys were practicing, I was on the bike for almost the whole practice. And the bike is, <laughs> is boring. You know, they're tired from practice. I wanted that. Number one, Paul George music. Like many NBA players before him, Paul George is no stranger to rap. After all, he regularly listens to Drake, although he likes to represent the West Coast by listening to artists such as Nipsey Hussle, The Game, Jay-Z, Meek Mill, Rick Ross, Lil Wayne, and Migos. In fact, such of these artists are on quote-unquote his go-to list, with many of them being made by the same rappers he listened to in high school, with his self-professed favorite song being by Lil Wayne. Interestingly enough, this ended up being his favorite motivational track for years. However, after coming across a quote in class that said, quote, don't tell me the sky's the limit when there's footprints on the moon, he then soon began to listen to it a little bit less. Regardless of where NBA players go, we think that you'd agree with us in saying that Paul George's taste in music is pretty solid. That's all for today, folks, and we hope that you liked the video. Let us know in the comments down below what your thoughts are on Paul George, and if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to drop a like and subscribe for more NBA content. Until next time, take it easy, guys.